How to make a Stuart triple expansion engine run. Part 12. I personally do not like the anodized aluminium cladding that is currently supplied for Stuart models engines. A few years ago I was given a useful tip from a man in Scotland by the name of Ronnie Mall when I bought an engine from him. He suggested using cheap supermarket baking trays instead and I've done it this way ever since. Here's a baking tray looking very new and here's the cladding on the triple expansion engine which is not very good at all, it's badly dented and it's scratched. I need to cut the edges off the baking tray first so I can use the middle part that I need. You've got to be a bit careful with this, don't put your fingers in the way of the blade. And don't do it at this speed, the video is currently running at a high speed set in the editor. Although really the job itself is not much slower than this. The blade is sharp and the metal is thin and in no time at all, all four corners of the baking tray are ready for the scrap bin. I removed the aluminium cladding in a previous episode and here you see it's very bendy and very marked. I'm going to use the original cladding as a template, I really needed to straighten it first. But anyway, I end up with a scribed line in approximately the right place. Method 1. Using a small bandsaw to cut out the parts. This is not ideal. As previously shown, the bandsaw blade cuts the plate very easily, but it doesn't give a good surface finish on the edge. The good thing about using a bandsaw is that it doesn't distort the plate. If I use tin snips, it will bend the plate, because don't forget it's very thin metal. The answer to the rough edge is simple. Use a needle file to clean up the edge. This is a bit small scale labour intensive. It does the job, but I'm a bit worried about scratching the surface with the file as I do this job. And cleaning the edges is not a very accurate way to do it. This piece of cladding would need painting to make it look good, because you can see silvery parts at the edges. If you had a nibbler, that would be useful, but it would possibly mark the surface of such thin metal. I thought at this point it would be a good idea to flatten out the original cladding to use as a pattern for the next method. Here's the original cladding with three pieces of baking tray. I made three to allow for a bit of human error. OK, so that's method one. Now I'm attacking another baking tray. And don't worry, these are really cheap. So if you mess up, it really doesn't matter. You just get better at it the more you make. This cutting, by the way, is in real time. As you can see, because the metal's so thin and the blade is sharp, the bandsaw cuts through the baking tray very quickly and very easily. I have one of these. It's called a Clark Metal Worker. And this is method two, using a small guillotine to cut out the parts. This is the smallest in the range of the Clark Metal Worker series. Not only is it a guillotine, it's also a folder and in the top when you lift the lid, it's a set of bending rollers. A quick health and safety warning. Don't use the guillotine without the guard attached, because not only does the guard stop you from getting your fingers in the blade, it also puts pressure on the work to hold it rigid. I've removed the guard so the camera can see what I'm doing. Had I have left the guard in place, you wouldn't be able to see the cutting operation. I like this small, inexpensive machine very much. Here I'm replacing the guard. It's only suitable for cutting and bending thin sheet metal. It's not a big industrial thing. You can get larger ones, but for what I need to use it for, the small one is adequate. Here is the content, more or less, of two baking trays. That's eight pieces of cladding suitable for a triple expansion engine. Normally I would use a thin piece of card. The thickness of a birthday card is ideal and I will cut it to shape to fit in place on the triple expansion engine, then simply push the holes through using a scriber. But I'm probably not going to do it this way, because I have so many of these, if I make a mess of one of them, I have a few more to go at. And this alleviates the nervousness I would normally experience if I only had two pieces of metal at my disposal. That just about covers the cladding, what I'm going to show is a little bit of tweaking of the engine to improve its running characteristics. And this clip shows just how easy it is to adjust the position of the eccentric sheaves. 
I'm leaving the intermediate cylinders eccentric sheaves well alone. They're held in with very small slot-headed screws. And luckily the timing of the intermediate cylinder seems to be okay when I look through the hole in the side of the block after removing the plug. I've adjusted the position of the eccentric for the high pressure cylinder and now I'm working on the low pressure cylinder. Suddenly when the engine bursts into life it is running noticeably better. The rest of the video features the engine running at different pressures. It's running in quite nicely now. In this clip I set the eccentric sheaves to retard the timing to the engine and I soon changed my mind, listen to it in the next clip, no knocking. By gripping the flywheel I can feel how much power the engine has. And there you have it, how to make cylinder cladding using baking trays and tweak the engine so it runs a lot sweeter than it did. That's it for this one, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.